Hi guys, Dave here, and today I'm going to show you a new song by The Pretenders, Don't Get Me Wrong. And the reason why I picked this one is that um, it's got a nice little kind of musical idea that I want to show you. And it's where you take a repeated musical figure and play it over changing chord progression. Um, the term is commonly known as ostinato. And you hear it on things like uh, Sweet Child of Mine, like on the introduction and stuff like that. Anyway, let's get on with the lesson. Um, first of all, the main guitar part. Now, when I hear, first heard it on the record, I thought it was probably just palm muted. And that might still be the case. But I found that when I tried to record it, it wasn't giving me quite the right sound. So this is what I've done. And it may be what they did on the record, but I, I wouldn't know for sure. So basically, instead of palm muting it, I put a little bit of foam muting right by the bridge. I know bass players from the 60s used to do this a lot on the old Motown records. And uh, yeah, I think this is possibly what they did for the guitar part. So it just kind of makes it a little bit more muted, but it means that I can strum in different areas of, of the guitar. And I got a feeling that that's what they'd done. They put a mute on, and instead of kind of strumming here, there was maybe a little bit more over towards the next side. And it gave it a particular sound. Okay, now the main guitar part, is very simple it's just on two strings and I've got it on the G and D strings the middle two and I'm starting off just by holding the fifth fret on both and you're gonna do two strums like that then the G string is gonna switch down to the fourth fret so now you've got four and five just for a single strum then the finger goes back onto the fifth fret for another two. And then it goes back to the fourth for the last strum. And the strumming is kind of up, down, down, up, down, up. Like that. Also, the whole thing's got a bit of a swing to it as well. So just bear that in mind when you're playing it. Like that. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm just muting off any unwanted strings with the left hand fingers, so like the backs of these fingers, and uh, sometimes I'll bring my thumb over to stop the bass strings from ringing. That way I can be a little bit more freer with my strumming hand. So that's the main figure. Now you get four bars of C, and you use that little pattern. So four bars of that, then it switches to an A minor chord, and you still play the same pattern for another four bars. Then you do the same thing over the D minor chord. Again for four bars. And then this is the only time when it moves. So the last four bars are a G chord or G11, I, I tend to think of it as. And what I'm doing there, I'm still only really playing the middle two strings, but I tend to also hold down the B string at the first fret. Sometimes I'll just mute it off with that finger. The main work is being done on the second fret on the G and third on the D. And again, you get that little bit of movement. So the first two strums are like that. Then the finger comes off the G string, so it's open for one strum. Then finger goes back on for two more. And then it comes off again for the last drum. Like I say, it doesn't sound bad even if you put that, even if you do hear that B string as well, it sounds quite nice. So that'll still work as well. And that's the main kind of muted ribbon guitar part that you hear through most of the song.
Okay, now there's one bit that's a little bit different in the rhythm guitar part, and that is the bridge, where it's more of a kind of a clean, jangly guitar sound. So I've added um, a bit of chorus as well for this and compressor, just to even the sound out a little bit. Um, possibly this one was done on the bridge pickup just to make it a little bit more of that sort of sound. But the, the middle pickup on the on the telecast is quite nice as well, so your choice. And basically the chord sequence is just a D minor seven to a G seven. The clean guitar part, it doesn't it's not slavish to what it it, it kind of spells a little bit of the chords out, but um, there's extra notes in there as well. And the main goal here is just to keep the notes ringing into each other as much as you can. So the first bar. I just hold down this little shape. So one on the B, three on the D string, and the third string G is open. Like that, so I'm just playing strings. Two, four, three, four. So that's over a D minor seven. And then over the G seven, I just leave my finger on the third fret of the D. So I'm just playing two strings, two, three, four, two. Then over to the next bar, I'm just holding down one on the B, and I'm just playing strings, two, three, three, two. Then it's gonna be open, um, open two, open three. And then on the B string, I play three open. Like that, and that's over the G7, so. Like that. Okay, next four bars. So over the D minor seven, we get this little back and forth between uh, the two strings. So all I'm doing is holding down one on the B, two on the G, and I'm just going two, three, two, three, two. And the rhythm is like this. Then over the G, we're just gonna play open strings. So it's just gonna go two, three, 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 two. To the same rhythm as the previous bar. And then the next bar over the D minor seven is what we've just done. With fingers one and two. So same thing again. And then finally over the next G seven, we're just um, walking up notes. Uh, so on the B, open, three, and then first string E, play the third fret. And what I do is I try and keep my fingers on just to let them ring in. Another way you could play that is to play it like a little G shape and play. You could play it like that as well. So four on the G and then three on the B and the and the E strings. So that's another way you could play that bar. Okay, next four bars. So a lot of what we've seen before, so over the D minor seven, I'm just holding down one on the B and I'm just playing strings two, three, three, two. Then over the G7, all I'm holding is the third fret on the D, and I play strings two, three, four, two. So we've had that before. Now this one, a bit like one of the patterns we've done before, but it starts, you, you have your first finger down on the first fret of the B, but it starts with an open G. So you go two, three, two. And then the finger comes down on the second fret of the G string, and we play three, two. So you get. Like so. And then we get the G7 pattern again. 
that we've just played. Then the last four bars, you just get a build up on a G11 chord. So, for the first bar, you just play 1 B, 2 G. Then we just play them open. Open B, open G. You do another bar there. Then we just play 1 B, open G. Then 3 E, 3 B. And then just on the B, 3 1 3. And that will lead you into the guitar solo. Okay, for the guitar solo, uh, it's very simple. There's not much to this at all. Lots of long notes. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the sound. I su suspect that it's possibly the middle pickup on a Telecaster. Again, I could be wrong on that, but I find that it got me quite close to the sound. Um, amp model wise, I'm using a Vox and um, it's not totally clean. There's a little bit of break up on it, which helps to kind of fatten the sound out a little bit. Now, and also on the record, I feel they probably put quite a long, lush reverb on it, maybe even a little bit of delay just to make it sound a little bit more, like, larger. So I've got a, a long plate reverb on this particular setting. So you can hear it's got quite a lot of trowel on it. Okay, first four bars, nice and simple. So that's open G, 3B, 5E and then 5B. The next phrase starts open G again. Then we play one on the B. You hear a little bit of a slide and, and this is why I think he's playing it down here. And he plays this little power chord. So that's 3B, 5E. And then this little double stop, 5B, 5G. Next phrase, very similar, open G again, C, 
uh, sorry, first fret on the B string. That power chord again, 3, B, 5, E. Then we're going to play 6, B, 5, G. That holds for three bars. Then we get this. So what I do with that, I do a little bar across the fifth fret on strings one to three. What I'm really holding is seven on the D, five on the G, eight on the B, and it's a little bit of a strum on it. Then I walk down the fingers, 6B, 5B, 7G, then 6 on the B, open D, open G. Then you get this little pull off on the D string, just Pick three, pull off two, onto open. And then we play a low G, third fret on the sixth string E. And then we're about to start the next phrase. Again, starts the same way. Open G, one B. Little power chord again. to 5B and G. So just, just like earlier phrases. Then the next phrase starts very similar. So open G, 1B, power chord again. And this time I'm going to play a little bit of an A minor shape. So you bar across the fifth fret on strings 1 to 3 and play 7 on the D string. But I don't play the first string when I play this, I just play up to the second. Next run up, just like before, open G, 1 B, power chord, and then 6 B, 5 G. Holds for three bars. Slightly variation on this last lick, so I've got that little bar shape again across the fifth fret, seven on the D again. So I've got seven D, five G, eight on the B. Then I go to six on the B. Then I do a hammer pull off, five six five on the B. 7G, then I hold, I keep a shape held down. So that's 6B, 7G, 5D. Let those run in. Then, so that I'm playing three on the D. Then I pull off two to open on the D. Then I play open G. And that's the end of the solo. The only other bit of lead guitar on this is um, on the outro. He, he plays a little phrase three times, which is this, really simple. So for that I'm just playing open A, then three, and add vibrato on that note, then two on the D. You play that three times, and then on the final time, once you've played it, we just finish on two on the G string.
And that's the outro. So alongside the main rhythm guitar part, there's also an acoustic guitar part that's quite low in the mix. So I'm going to show you what I think that is. It's it kind of it's very similar to to the main part, but you've got a more obvious chord change going on here. So for the C chord, he plays this little figure. So for that, you're just holding down a C chord. So that's open E, one B, open G. 2D and 3A. It's kind of an up down on that. And then we very briefly take our first finger off the B string. So it's now open and that will give us a C major 7. Just for one strum. Then we put the finger back on for a C chord and do another three strums. So the strumming is up down, down, up, down, up. And again, it's with that swing that we had earlier. And then like the first half of beat one is just cut off. So it's like one and then you're on the end. So you do that for four bars for the C chord. And then it's a very similar thing for the A minor. We're going to play an A minor seven. So um, open E, one B, open G, two D, open A. And you do two strums on that. Then again, you take the first finger off just for one strum and then put it back on for the remaining three. Like that. And again, that's four bars of that pattern. Then we're going to go to the D minor seven. And this is a little bit different. Um, so a D minor seven shape, we're just barring across the first and second strings at, at the first fret, and you're holding down the second fret on the G, you've got an open D string as well. First two strums like that, and then what we do, I'm going to take the bar off so you, the first and second strings are open, just a single strum on that, and then put the bar back on for the remaining three. like that. Four bars of that and then over the G chord or G11 as we said earlier. Slightly different this. Um, so I'll go through the shape. Three on the E, one on the B, two on the G, open D. The fifth string A is muted off with the back of my third finger, which is on the third fret of the sixth string E. So you get this, this nice kind of uh, sound going on. Very, yeah, it's like a G11, I suppose. Two strums on that. Then I take my fingers off the B and G strings, so you get more like a G chord for a single strum. Put the fingers back on for two more strums and then take them off for the final strum. So you get. Like that. Like that. And that gives you like the main, so, and again, that's, that's for four bars and that completes the whole cycle of chords.
So for the bridge part where you hear the jangly guitars just before the guitar solo, um, the main chord changes are just a bar of D minor seven and a bar of G. So um, what I did, the D minor seven shape that we played earlier, I'm just gonna play down, down, up, up, down. Then I switch to a G chord. For the same strumming pattern. So just a regular G shape, but if you don't know it, that's just three on the E. Um, the B, G and D strings are open, and then you've got second fret on the A and third fret on the G. And again, I'm just gonna go down, down, up, up, down. So it's just. So basically that D minor G, that happens a total of six times. And then for the build up just before the solo, the last four bars, I just did a single strum on each. So each strum lasts for two beats. So you do the first shape. You might remember this one before, the kind of G11. So that's, I'll just go over it very quickly. Three on the E, one B, two G, open D, fifth strings muted, third fret on the E. So just one strum on that, and then one strum on your G chord. And you just do that four times, and then you're into you're into the guitar solo, and you're back to your regular um, chord sequence that you had before. Okay, guys, well, that's the end of the lesson. I hope you have a lot of fun learning this tune, and you get a lot from this lesson. See you soon.